Welcome back. We're going to talk about full wave rectifiers now. Um, and there are two very common versions, the center tapped full wave rectifier, as well as the diode bridge full wave rectifier that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one, the center tapped full wave rectifier, is comprised of a, a, a transformer, center tapped transformer in this case, and uh, two diodes, typically they are power diodes because it's a circuit that is used in uh, power applications. Uh, label D1 and D2. And we can see that there is a load resistor connected between the cathode of the diodes and the center tap of the transformer. So uh, during the positive half cycle of the input signal V in, uh, this point A uh, becomes more positive, diode D1 becomes forward biased and current flows through D1 and through the load resistor in the direction indicated so that uh, a voltage uh, drop across RL appears, V out, uh, which is positive in the polarity indicated because of the direction of current flow. During the negative half cycle, uh, D2 is a diode that turns on because its anode becomes of higher polarity than its cathode and the four current flows in that direction and it flows through the RL resistor in the same direction as during the positive half cycle. And therefore, uh, the voltage that appears across RL is of the same polarity as before. It's a uh, positive polarity in this case. So if we wanted to uh, write down what's going on, we will say that for the E in positive, we have that uh, D1 is the diode that turns on. And uh, V out is equal to V in minus one diode drop. And for negative V in values, then D2 is the one that turns on. And the output voltage becomes equal to um, negative V in uh, plus 0.7 or minus 0.7. If we want to plot um, the time domain plot for the input and output signals, if this is my, uh, my input signal, the in, then I will have that my output will be um, follow the input signal in the positive half cycle, except for a uh, diode drop. And then um, basically give me the absolute value of the input signal. Uh, otherwise, this is my V out. I can also write V out is equal to absolute value of V in uh, for, for all values of V in. Uh, disadvantages of this circuit is that it uses uh, a transformer, which is uh, bulky and expensive. And also we still have the diode drop. But again, depending on our application, if we're dealing with power applications or very large signals, we may not mind about the diode drop. Um, if we are dealing with a precision application, then it may be very significant. Another version of uh, a similar circuit, another version of a full wave rectifier, is the diode bridge full wave rectifier. And in this case, uh, we have that during the positive half cycle, uh, we will see that current is flowing into the diode bridge. Um, D1 is going to turn on or become forward biased. Uh, since we find the cathode of D3, uh, D3 is going to be reverse bias, so the current is going to flow, keep flowing through resistor RL, and then come back uh, to the diode bridge and uh, flow through D2. And back. And so for positive input signals, V in greater than zero, basically we have that D1 and D2 and D2 exactly are turned on. And therefore our V out signal is equal to V in minus, and notice that in this case is uh, two diode drops, one for D1 and, and another one for D2. Whereas during the negative half cycle, V in less than zero. We have that the current is uh, flowing in the opposite direction. 
and so it will um, flow through diode D3. Notice that it again will flow through the RL resistor in the same direction as during the positive half cycle, and so the voltage that develops is with the same polarity as before. And then uh, basically go back, except in this case it's going to take the route through D4 and come back that way. And so for negative input signals we have D3 and D4 that are turned on, and therefore V out is going to be equal to uh, negative V in minus 1.4 volts. So again, if I wanted to represent um, my time domain plot for both input and output signals, I will observe that V out is simply the absolute value of V in minus two diode drops if I wanted to be precise. And so I'm going to say, you know, this is an approximation. This is my V in. Oh, I am going to keep it consistent with what I did before and just put V in in blue. And my V out. Uh, there you go. If you wanted to be more precise, you could say, you know, in the first case, uh, we got, we have the absolute value of V in minus one diode drop. And in the second case, minus two diode drops. Uh, it is, again, a better configuration in some applications because it gets rid of the transformer, so it is um, less bulky and, uh, and cheaper to build. Uh, it still accomplishes the job of full wave rectification, but notice that you have a bigger diode drop. And again, depending on the um, magnitude of your input signals, uh, you may or may not care as much about it. If you're dealing with a precision application, uh, none of these circuits is going to basically cut it because uh, 0.7 volts is going to become a significant uh, portion of the input signal. Um, one more thing to mention is that since uh, full wave rectifiers are typically used in applications involving the generation of, uh, of DC signals, such as a DC power supply, uh, oftentimes the full wave rectification is the first step uh, in the generation of a DC signal. And then the second step will be filtering that waveform, adding a, a filtering capacitor, which I will add here. So you will add a capacitor in parallel with uh, that resistor. I'm going to call it CF for filtering capacitor. And what that will do, actually, I'm going to add it in a different color. So it doesn't create, um, doesn't get confused for something that is part of the circuit. Maybe I should add it in red. Basically, what, uh, what I get out of my circuit now is a smooth version of that full wave rectified signal because uh, my capacitor will initially charge. And then if I've selected a large enough capacitor, it will not have time to discharge before um, the next positive cycle of the output signal comes through. And so it will start discharging, but then it will charge back up. It will start discharging, but then it will charge back up, etc. And so what... I end up with basically is um, an, an almost DC signal with uh, some ripple. But again, in order to accomplish that, I will need to select a capacitor, a filtering capacitor that is large enough so that they can hold that charge so it will not discharge quickly before the next cycle comes along. Uh, but we will see that as an application of uh, rectifier circuits in a future video. Thank you.